Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is the 26th tutorial in this course and in this tutorial we are going to begin our discussion on string functions and we're going to check out uh, five really cool and important string functions. So the first one that we're going to have a look at is the capitalized string function and uh, this function returns a string with the first letter capitalized if not already, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a string object first and I'll call it str1 and I'll give it the value uh, hey what's up, right? So this is simple enough and uh, you know you must have noticed that the first alphabet of the string is H and uh, it's a small case alphabet it's not an uppercase alphabet right. So if I want to change the case of the alphabet H to uppercase then I'll use the capitalized function this way. I'll first type in my string object which is str1. I'll follow that up with a dot and then I'll type in the name of the method which is capitalize. Follow that up with a pair of empty parentheses and just press the enter key and there you go. I see that in the result I get a string in which the first alphabet H is a capital alphabet, right? It's, it's an uppercase alphabet. And uh, the next method that we're going to check out is the count method and this method is used to calculate the number of times a string exists in another string, right? So I'm going to change the value of the string object str1 and I'm uh, actually going to, you know, write a few lines in it. So that's why I'm going to type in triple quotes. I mean, you know, three double quotes. Uh, that's what I meant. So, you know, this way I'll be able to go to different lines and, you know, type in sentences. So the first sentence that I'm going to type is uh, Tom is a good guy. Right, and let me just type in a few more sentences about Tom. So Tom is also hardworking and uh, you know, what else? Tom is honest and tell me a few more good qualities about Tom. Now, Tom is a team player and uh, you know, Tom is actually a party pooper, which is not a good thing, but you know, still you can have a couple of bad characteristics if you're so good at so many other things. So Tom is a party pooper. And uh, next, Tom sleeps early. And uh, next, I can uh, type in something like Tom works out, right? So that's enough. I don't want to write anything more about Tom. Otherwise, people would start thinking that I'm in love with this guy. I don't even know who he is. <laughs> so there you go. When I press the enter key, my string is created. And I can simply type in str1 to look at the content of the object. And there you go. You know, these are all the sentences I have and I see all these slash and escape sequences in between, you know, the sequences tell me where I have the new line characters in the string, right? So let's say I want to count the number of times I have the word Tom in my string. So I'll type in str1 and just as we did with the previous method capitalize, I'll type in the name of the string object first, str1 and then I'll type in count, right? And within parentheses, I'll type in the string that I wish to, you know, I mean the string that I want to find in my string object and also the count of which I wish to know. So I want to uh, know the count of Tom. So I'll type in Tom. When I press the enter key, I see that the word Tom exists seven times in the string str1, right? So it's a very cool method. And the next method that we're going to check out is the ends with method. And uh, this method checks if the string that's passed as an argument to the function is actually the last part of the calling object string or not. So let me demonstrate this uh, with an example. So I'm going to change the value of the str1 string object that I have and I'm going to change it to I love tennis.com. And I don't know if there is a website with this URL, but you know, let's just assume that there is one, right? So I'll uh, create my string object by pressing the enter key. And now let's say I want to check out whether the last part of this uh, uh, this string is dot org or not, right? Let's say I don't know what is the you know uh, domain of this website, right? So to check, I'll type in str1 dot ends with, and then within parentheses and uh, single quotes, I'll type in dot org, right? When I press the enter key, I see false as the result, and that's because the last part of the string is dot com and not dot org, right? And uh, if I check it with dot com. Let's see what I get. I get true, right? So that's why it's called the ends with method. It checks, you know, the ending part of the string, whether that is same uh, as the argument that you've passed to the function or not. If it is same, then it results into true. If it's false, then it returns uh, false, right? 
So the next method that we're going to check out is the find method and uh, this method checks if the string that's passed as an argument to the function exists in the calling string or not and if it exists then it returns the index position of the first character of the argument that you've passed and if it doesn't exist then it simply returns minus one right. So again I'll demonstrate it and it will be easier for us to understand. So I'm going to change the value of the str1 string object again and I'm going to change it to catch me oops catch me if you can right and uh, then i'm going to use the find method this way i'll type in str1.find and then within uh, parentheses and single quotes i'll type in u so let's say i want to find out whether the word u exists in this string or not when i press the enter key i get 12 as the result and that's because the index of the word u that is the alphabet u alphabet y in the word u is 12 in the string and let's check that so c is 0 a is 1 t is 2 c is again 3 h is 4 space is 5 m is 6 e is 7 space is 8 i is 9 f is 10 space is 11 and then y is 12 right so that's why you get 12 as the answer because the index position of the alphabet y which is the starting alphabet of the argument that you pass to the function it exists in the string firstly you know that's why you don't see minus one as a result and uh, you know the index position of y is 12 that's why you get that is the answer and if we check it with uh, some string that doesn't exist in the string let's say we check it with us instead of you then we get minus one right because the word us doesn't exist in the string the last method that we're going to check out in this tutorial is the is lower method and this method checks whether all characters in uh, the calling string are in lowercase or not right so i'm going to again change the value of my string object i'm going to change it to hello world hello world right and uh, you guys must, must have noticed that the h of the word hello and the alphabet w of the word world they are uppercase alphabets they're not small case alphabets right so i'll press the enter key to create my string object and when i call the is lower method is lower method with the string object str1 uh, i don't have to pass in anything as an argument to this function you know i just have to keep my parentheses empty and uh, i see false and that's because you know as i said there are two alphabets in the string that are not lowercase alphabets but let me change the value of the string object i'll change it to you know hello world and this time i have all alphabets as small case alphabets and uh, now if i would execute this function i would get true as the result and that's because all alphabets are indeed lowercase alphabets right so i hope you guys had fun watching this tutorial that's all i wanted to discuss and in the next tutorial we are going to discuss more string functions and i hope you're having fun in this course and you may subscribe to my channel if you haven't already i'll see you in the next video till then take care